Finally tonight, let us take you on a moonlit tour of one of our most historic areas. Birmingham's jewellery quarter is famous for the millions of pounds worth of gold and gems it sells. It has a fascinating history, dating back to the American gold rush and throws up a few surprises. Mark Goff joins some keen amateur sleuths to find out more about this great treasure. The streets of Birmingham's jewellery quarter have seen centuries of history, mystery and surprises. And local historian Chris Upton knows more than most. The jewellery quarter is basically an 18th century creation. It's the Colmore family that came up with the smart idea of leasing their land. And it was because of the discovery of gold in California in 1849. They found new supplies of gold which lifted the jewellery quarter again and made it worth expanding for a third time. He can condense centuries of history into just an hour on a walking tour of the streets of old Birmingham. They used to say Birmingham was built on seven hills. I'm not, just like Rome, and, uh, and one of them was, was this one. It was the main route to Wolverhampton in the 1600s and 1700s. It was called Hangman's Lane, actually, at one time. The bank was an old bank, 1892, by uh, Yeovil Thomason, who designed Birmingham Council House. And this was his building um, as well. And it was a button works, button making works. Um, and it's in that very ornate um, Italian Gothic style. And buttons probably made Birmingham's fortune in the 18th century before other things like cars. The one that uh, I've always liked the best in this street, just for its rather unusual um, top there, the Pelican Works, which was built as an electroplating works and meant to look like an Italian palace or palazzo. Then you remember there was a competition a couple of years ago for the most fattening pub food in England <laughs> and the church in one. Their, their, their portions are immense, <laughs> absolutely huge. I, I took a party of European uh, lecturers there uh, a couple of years ago and uh, the, the, the food was so big the Bulgarians took photographs of it. <laughs> uh, there was a church here once, it was called St George's. The church itself was demolished in 1960, rather sadly. They've just preserved the graveyard, but let's, let's go and meet the architect. So here he is, um, in splendid isolation. They knocked down the church, but they didn't knock down uh, Thomas Rickman himself. He's still there. You wouldn't expect the Romans to come up in this walk, but actually they do. The, the line of this road follows the Roman road. The final stop is at some unusual gates on a building renovated by cash from Prince Charles's estate, no less, the Duchy of Cornwall. At first, the locals thought them ugly. The city council said uh, they'll have to go. By that stage, there'd been so much uh, attention and the connection with Prince Charles that it, tourists were coming from Japan and America in coach loads to see these <laughs> gates um, with money to spend in jewellers' yeah. shops. And almost miraculously, <laughs> the local traders suddenly decided they were rather quite nice gates. And, and the city council then put them up for a design award. <laughs> there are more tours planned next year from the Museum of Jewellery in the Jewellery Quarter. Mark Goff in Birmingham for Central Tonight. A marvellous dash around the Jewellery Quarter. Of course, you've been there earlier. Oh, I was there today, get my wife's Christmas present, yes. Ooh. Just walking through on my way to pain stretches. Don't tell us what you call pain stretches. I bet it was a massive, lovely gym. Oh, yeah, huge. What a lovely place to yeah. go for a Christmas present, Bob. <laughs> Quite so, yes. Mm. <laughs> I think that brings us to the end of our programme tonight. It certainly does, yes. Whatever you're doing, wherever you're going, have a good one, and we'll join you tomorrow night. I hope you'll join us indeed tomorrow night at the usual time of six.